hey guys welcome back to this new video today we are going to have a paper review on benchmarking spatial relationships in text to image generation so this is a very 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 recent paper written by the folks from microsoft research um, so you can find this paper on research gate i've downloaded it here and i've gone through the paper uh, it's an 18 pages long paper but uh, we don't have to worry most of the content is just in the top uh, i believe it's top eight pages yeah there you go so everything from it is just references so it's a small paper but it does have some pretty interesting research um, so this paper has been written in collaboration with the folks from Arizona State University and Microsoft Research uh, so let's go through the paper so there are some very basic things that we need to understand here before going through this paper which is what is spatial relationships and what's text to image generation so I hope you're all familiar with DALI model and there are other models as well but DALI is the most popular one as of now. Uh, so basically when you give a text input the model is going to generate an image out of scratch. Uh, this image is going to have all the things that you have mentioned in your text. So for example if I say something like uh, a butterfly sitting on a flower it's going to generate an image where you have a butterfly sitting on top of a flower. So that's basically DALI, it's text to image generation, it's as simple as it is. Uh, you can find out about it from the name itself, it's that simple. So what is spatial relationships? Um, I don't know if any uh, anybody has actually noticed this, but DALI is actually pretty bad in spatial relationships. So these examples that you see on the screen here, so if I give a text input such as a chair above a knife, the chair is supposed to be on top of the knife above the knife but as you can see the result generated here is quite the opposite and also the same thing goes for all of these images so that's exactly what spatial relationship is the relationship between two objects in terms of spatial distribution whether it is on the left right above below under uh, that's called spatial relationships so these folks have reviewed different models there are uh, text to image generation by the way the word text to image generation is so small so big so they have uh, written a short form for that so t2i models and i'm going to be using t2i for reference throughout this entire video okay so they have investigated and looked at different t2i models to understand how they're all performing in terms of spatial relationships and that's basically what this whole paper is all about but they have also given us a couple of things extra one is they have given wiser so they've investigated the ability of t2i models to generate correct spatial relationships among objects and present wiser this is just a evaluation metric okay so similar to how we have a lot of different metrics like jacquard score or dice when it comes to image segmentation and all uh, this is just one more metric um, at the end of the paper i'm going to tell you my thoughts on this wiser metric uh, it's not that useful to be honest uh, but still nonetheless uh, it is it is what it is it is one of the metric we can use it uh, it's just not suggestible to use it because of the time complexity it takes but it does exist we gotta start somewhere and keep in mind this is fairly new paper very recent just a couple of months ago that's it okay so uh, from the entire abstract one thing that we can take away is these folks have given us something called wiser it's a metric and apart from wiser they have also given us a data set we offer the SR2D dataset and the Visor metric. So these are the main two things that we can take away from this paper. One is the Visor metric and the second is SR dataset. You don't have to worry about the SR dataset much because it's very very simple one. It's just another dataset created from an you know, created from an existing dataset. So it's just that they have labeled existing images. That's it. Nothing more than that. Uh, wiser metric in on the other hand it's a little interesting so let's go to the introduction and as I've told you these folks have looked at different models so uh, figure one illustrates images generated by state-of-the-art model DALI 
again uh, we are all familiar familiar with dali version 2 of course and the version 1 the first version of dali is not that good but the second version is phenomenal and yet here we are looking at all the different um, results which are completely wrong from what they're supposed to be uh, so this is like kind of like a bug that they have found in dali it's a very interesting one let's keep scrolling and here you can see the lack of spatial understanding by t2i models can be frustrating to creators seeking render specific configuration of objects so uh, where exactly is the spatial relationship going to play a major role well i've recently seen a youtuber use chat gpt uh, sorry i've recently seen a youtuber use dali to create a thumbnail where he had a white uh, it was a chess youtube channel okay the youtuber needed a thumbnail uh, for uh, his latest video on mittens it was a chatbot which is basically a cat uh, so he wanted a thumbnail which had two cats playing chess and these cats are supposed to be the opposite color of their chess pieces so a white cat would play black pieces and a black cat would play white chess pieces so he wanted this to be the thumbnail and when he gave that as an input uh, he, it didn't give him a proper output at all no matter how many times he tried it's one small application for where you can actually use spatial relationships or where spatial mapping plays a very important role uh, but yeah there is still room for improvement in Delhi okay now let's see we created the SR 2D data set containing 25,280 sentences describing two dimensional spatial relationships. Exactly. So they took the MS Coco data set. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's basically a data set just like ImageNet. It has lots of different classes and lots of different images. And they took all those images and they took the classes of those images, the classes of objects that are in the image, and they have mapped. The spatial relationship between them and given that as a label so if i have a picture with a book and a basketball those are my labels just one image two labels book and basketball they looked at uh, the relationship between spatial relationship between the book and the basketball so if the basketball is on the right side of the book they have labeled it as a basketball on the right of the book that's the label you have the image you have this newly constructed label and they have basically repeated this process for uh, as they mentioned 25,280 sentences and they formed all the different images put them together and they're calling that as the sr2d data set of course this is going to be very much useful if we are focusing on improving only the spatial relationship mapping but other than that it's not that useful to be honest uh, we can still just go ahead and use the MS Coco data set itself for training our model from scratch that is or just go for ImageNet of course it has a lot more classes now they have used all of these different models that they have mentioned here so uh, you can check out the references section in this paper for the actual papers on all these models so they have used Glide, DALI Mini, CogView 2, DALI version 2 stable diffusion and composable diffusion so these are all the different models that they have tested this yz metric on and not just yz metric sorry uh, these are all the models that they have tested to see which one of them is giving accurate spatial relationships and spatial relationships it's a tongue twister okay now um, yz provides a macro perspective on the performance gap okay uh, so when it comes to visor metric, they have divided in divided the visor metric into three parts. One is the basic visor, the other is visor n, and the third one is conditional visor, which is what you see here, visor c o n d. Uh, they should have just named it conditional uh, c visor or something like that, but it's okay, totally fine. Visor conditional, sorry, conditional visor. So these are the three things that they have discussed in terms of visor. 
so visor is basically the scratch the basic visor regular visor it tells you how good your model has performed for a particular image so when we are generating text to image we usually do it multiple times sorry we usually generate multiple images at once so when you have one context based on that one context we generate approximately three or four images visor here tells you how good the image is for that particular image does it make sense visor tells you how uh, well the model has performed for that particular image just for that particular image if i have four images i might have a different visor score for all these four of if i have four different images then my visor score might be different for each one of them okay so the first image it might be a very high score second image it might be a very low score because the first image has really good spatial mapping the second one does not so the visor the regular basic visor tells you the performance of the model for that particular image out of all the images that you have generated and the second one which is visor n reflects the practical value so as i told you if i have four images and if for example let's say two of them have gone wrong and two of them are pretty much completely accurate it's exactly what you want so visor n is telling you that uh, visor 1 visor 2 visor 3 visor 4 so if you have n number of images you're going to have visor n scores so visor 1 tells you that it's completely usable it is exactly what you wanted and visor 4 tells you the same thing but whereas visor 2 and 3 tell you that this image might not be exactly what the context specifies so that's visor n it's more or less the same thing so visor and visor n they're basically pretty much the same thing so let's combine both of them that's what you get when you combine both of them which is conditional visor the third one so the conditional visor disentangles two capabilities one the generation of multiple objects and two generation of correct spatial relationships between the rendered objects uh conditional visor is pretty much the actual metric that they've introduced in this whole paper we're going to have a deeper look at that conditional visor in the later parts of the section but for now you can just remember that visor basically tells you uh how good the model has performed for that particular image and visor n is the score of that particular image from the set of rendered images okay and they have used this visor score to compare all the models that they mentioned before so whatever you see here glide dali 2 mini uh, sorry dali mini cog view 2 dali version 2 all these models uh, they have calculated the visor score for all of them and apparently um, shows that even the best model in our benchmarking uh, their best model is dali 2 by the way in our benchmark generates correct spatial relationships on less than 40% of the test cases so it's pretty much statistics data itself data can speak for itself and in this case we have only less than 40% of the test cases which are correct if dali version 2 it's a well known thing that dali version 2 is uh, extremely robust and powerful model and if dali 2 itself can't generate more than 40 percentage of accurate results we can't expect anything better from other models so that's a little disappointing but again this is kind of like a bug that they've discovered so there is room for improvement that's exactly what this paper is trying to prove here so to summarize their contributions they have mentioned three points here one is the visor which is the metric again the second is the sr2d data set and the third point is what we have discussed here just the statistics and evaluation of state of the art t2i models evaluation of state of the art t2i models these are basically the three things that they have discussed in this entire paper spatial relationships challenge dataset okay 
so uh, these are all the different four spatial mappings that they've took into consideration for this research left right above and below these are the only things that they have considered but of course there are many other spatial mappings that we can consider for example inside outside or diagonal relationships all those things but for simplicity sake they have considered only left right above and below on 80 object categories oops okay so from the ms coco data set they took 80 object categories 80 different labels 80 different objects and they have performed this research so let's see where do we have this okay so when i say r of ab that's basically mean right of a and b so what does that mean a is on the right side of b that's what they have uh, used to construct the label so when i say left of cat comma dog the cat should be on the left side of the dog cat is to the left of a dog so we are going to use this notation moving forward r of ab left of cat and dog so a is one class b is another class and r is basically a relationship between these two objects that relationship could be left right above or below so yeah this is where it gets interesting so if you see here okay so if you see figure 2 it illustrates all the different uh text context that they have given and all the different outputs that they have received from dali 2 model and let's see how they are calculating wiser for this uh so first of all if you see there are bounding boxes to all of these images so the purple box wait let me just undo this okay so the purple box indicates cases where one or both the objects are not generated um i think i missed that part but they have discovered that sometimes whenever they are generating text to images sorry whenever they are using text to image generation models and when they have multiple classes in that context in the text uh sometimes the model is missing one of the objects so in the generated output one object is missing so that's what you see in all the purple boxes here so this is like the best example to describe it a sports ball to the left of a bird but if you see the actual image that is that has been generated there is no sports ball at all and in the second case there is no bird at all third there is no bird at all and in the fourth you can ignore that because there are both of them and that's the reason why it's not in purple but uh, wherever you see purple in this it's basically cases where at least one or both the images are not generated uh, i don't think there are any cases where both the images are not generated but uh, one of them is missing that's for sure so all these images uh, have a purple bounding box that's again one more uh, downside that we have seen in delhi that these folks have observed in delhi now coming to the red boxes both objects are generated but oops okay red box both the objects are generated but with a wrong spatial relationship let's take this as an example an aeroplane to the right of a clock so this aeroplane is supposed to be on the right side of the clock but it's on the left the same thing goes here the same thing goes here and here as well let's look at this an orange above a giraffe again this is correct but if you look at this image the giraffe is above the orange so that's again one more wrong image that has been generated see all, all the incorrectly generated images have been marked with a red bounding box and the green box are just the successful cases the exactly what you have asked for so 
an orange above a giraffe you see an orange above a giraffe an orange above a giraffe and in this case there is no orange at all hence the purple bonding box so i think you get the gist of it so these are basically some examples that they have uh, showcased here so if you see let's say that i have two classes a and b there are totally eight different variations that i can generate with those two classes so left of ab right of ab above ab below ab and if you interchange ab with ba you get four more classes that is these so with two objects you can generate eight different cases eight different contexts each context can give you let's say four images so that's how they have constructed the uh, sr2d dataset sentence generation for each prediction again uh, it's pretty much simple so when i say a r b r is a set of four elements uh, sorry four uh, spatial mappings left right above and beyond so a is my object b is my second object so a to the left of b or a to the right of b whatever you see in the first line here that's been constructed in english here okay so i can use a or an an apple to the left of a banana something like that so when i have two classes i can construct four different sentences in this way and when i interchange ab i can get four more uh, contexts so as i've told you uh, from the ms coco data set these guys have took 80 different objects 80 different classes and i don't know how exactly they have come to this number 3160 but uh, yeah they're saying that they got 3160 unique combination of object pairs so for example if i have instead of 80 if i take only four objects a b c d uh with all the permutations i can get a b a c uh b a b c c a c b and that's how these folks have got all the different combinations there are 3160 unique combination so if you see here we have left right above below four of them and if i interchange the objects i get eight of them so with two variables i can form eight different types of contexts and here i'm taking 3160 unique combinations so with one combo i can get eight so with 3160 combos 3160 into 8 i get 25280 predictions that's the base that's basically the number of images that they have given us in sr2d dataset which is what they have mentioned here this sr2d data set contains 25280 text examples uniformly distributed of course now let's look at the wiser metric itself so if i go to this part of the paper so definition 1 is object accuracy uh, calculating the number of objects you have in the image in the generated image so when you have a context and your model has given you four images so let's say and you take any one image into consideration and then you run a function h it's an oracle function okay they are calling it as an oracle function but it's basically an object detection uh, so out of this one image you're going to detect how many objects do i have in that image the object accuracy for an image x generated by sentence containing a and b is okay so this is the mathematical relationship so if my context is something like this a sports ball to the left of a bird 
and I get this as my image, the third one or the second one or the first one, then it's going to have uh, only one object detected. But in the context, I have two objects, so that doesn't go well. So which basically means that uh, this metric is going to give me a false as my output or a zero as my output, a negative, not a positive. Uh, okay, so one thing is this oracle function can be either a human or a model. So as I've told you, the oracle function is basically just a image sorry uh, object detection model. Of course, you can use an object detection model, but these folks have said that you know you can use an object detection or you can also go with a human itself, just basic human. Uh, of course, basic human, uh, human, using a human to detect objects for training another model is not that uh, uh, suggestible, of course. Uh, so I'm not even going to consider uh, showing you the parts where they have done that. But basically in this paper, they have discussed two different ways. One is using an object detection model as the oracle function to uh, define the visor metric and the second part where they've used actual humans to do the exact same thing the results are pretty much exactly the same because of course uh, object detection with a model and a human it's pretty much going to give you the exact same outputs i'm just going if i were a part of this research i would tell what objects were present in the image and if i used an image detection sorry an object detection model the model will still it'll still do the same thing detect what are the objects in the image so i'm not going to go through that entire part but i will show you where that part is you can go through that when uh, you want to read it okay so the definition 2 of the visor says the generated image r gen uh, r is the ground to ground truth sorry so R is the ground truth relationship mentioned in the text and R gen is the relationship in the generated image. So R is the relationship in the context, R gen is the relationship in the image. So my visor function is going to take four values. One is going to be the image itself, the actual image and a is the first object b is the second object and r is the relationship again this is going to be r of a comma b and r is basically left right above and below as we have discussed so these are the four things that you are going to pass to your visor metric and it's going to give you an output of one or zero zero is otherwise uh, one is if this condition is satisfied so what is the condition if the generated relationship okay if the relationship in the generated image the r gen is exactly what you have asked for in the context so r intersection a intersection b is basically r of a comma b so whatever you have mentioned in the context if that relationship is exactly the same as the relationship that you have in the generated output we are going to discuss how we exactly calculate this generation this relationship later on but if this relationship matches up with the relationship that you have mentioned in the context you get one as your score zero otherwise as simple as that uh, so coming to the third definition it's basically taking i is equal to 1 all the way up to n so what is n you have an, uh, a t2i model which is generating let's say five images your capital n is going to be five that's it so this score uh, is going to calculate the visor score this metric is going to calculate the visor score for each individual images and then give you an overall score so if i have one 
sorry my visor mod visor metric is going to return me one if this condition is satisfied uh, so let's say if i have four different images that have been generated they'll have visor scores as visor one visor two visor three visor four let me quickly highlight them so four different scores um, now each of these scores is going to be either one or a zero okay and as i've discussed if i get zero as my score if i scroll up these guys have mentioned that they are going to give you three things one is the visor itself so that is the mathematical function that's going to calculate and tell if the relationship in the context and that generated image is exactly the same or not we will look at how they are calculating the relationship but that's the most basic visor the second one is actually looking at the scores how many ones did i get and how many zeros did i get out of the set of generated images so if my t2i model is generating five images and if three of them have a one and two of them have a zero my visor n is going to give me a score of three okay as simple as that three by five basically three out of five okay that's pretty much it for this part okay there you go the conditional visor uh, let's look at this part so um, we are going to look at how exactly is visor calculating the relationship in the generated image the most interesting part of this paper the highlight of this paper okay here we have the context a motorcycle to the left of an elephant that is my context that i've given to my uh, t2i model and i got this image as my output of course there are multiple things in this entire image no idea what this floating thing is but we do have this particular image generated and if i ran this image through an object detector my oracle function could be an object detection model or could be a human anything but if i do that i get three objects identified one is an elephant second is a tree third is a motorbike out of three two labels are matching with what i have in the context elephant and a motorbike a motorcycle okay so two things one is the elephant the second is a motorcycle so we can get bounding boxes of course so an image segment sorry an object detection model always gives you bounding box from that bounding box i can find the center of both of these images sorry both both of these objects so for the elephant this is my bounding box and this is my center for the motorcycle this is my bounding box and this is my center if i just take a look at the x a and x b values my x a is right here and my x b is right here and this is my origin this is my 0 comma 0 with this as my origin and these are my two points i can calculate easily which object is on the left or right or above or below of which object so if i have a and b two objects i can easily calculate let's say we have a scatter plot with only two scatter points and using my x values i can calculate which is on the left side of uh, the other one so if i have a and b and this is my uh, x comma y um, coordinate axis and if i have my a at 1 0 comma 1 and if i have my b at 0 comma 4 then it's obvious that a is on what is this? a is on the left side of b 
the same goes the other way around so if i have uh, my first object at this point and my second object is before that is closer to the origin on the x axis if it is closer to the origin than it is to the uh, second object then i can easily identify which one is on the left side which one is on the right side the same thing goes for y axis as well so for x i can using x i can calculate the left and right and using y i can calculate which is above and which is below very simple right so using the centers these guys are calculating uh, the spatial mapping so in this case the elephant is on the left of the motorcycle and it is above the motorcycle because if you look at the y the yb is above ya my ya is closer to the origin than my yb so yb is above ya but again in the context we don't have anything related to above and below we just have left and right left basically so we can just consider only the uh, x axis and xa and xb if i look at them i can easily calculate and say that uh, you know xb is on the left of xa which is wrong so my r gen is not equal to r so the generate the relationship in the generated output is not equal to the relationship mentioned in the context there you go this is the condition and based on the metric that we have here if this condition fails we get a zero so the visor score for this image is going to be zero that's basically how they're calculating the visor score and this is why i have told you that this is not the most uh, suggestible way of uh, improving spatial mapping because you are using an object detector again it's one more model that you're introducing in the training itself so gans uh, uh, the t2i generator basically works on gan model and gan model already has two models generator and uh, discriminator uh, i've made a video on that you can go check it out but the generator model discriminator model they themselves have to be trained at every epoch at every batch size and here you're introducing one more model into the game into the training which is an object detector so that's going to increase the training time increase the time complexity again uh, but nonetheless it works it does the job so it can identify and give you a proper uh, metric telling whether the generator output is correct or not so what we can do in the future is combine visor metric with the existing metrics that we already use for our t2i models that's one way of doing it there is one more research paper that i'm going to uh, do a video on which focuses on exactly this point uh, so the conditional visor uh, that's the last kind of uh, definition f uh, sorry the last version of visor that they have discussed in this paper uh, conditional visor is basically conditional probability if you don't know what conditional probability is uh, please go read it out but it's very interesting thing it's very simple to be honest so conditional probability let's say you have two events event a and event b uh, probability of occurrence of event a is p of a probability of b is p of b if i want to find out the probability of occurrence of b given that a has already occurred that's conditional probability p of b by a which is exactly what these guys are discussing here so the conditional visor is basically a conditional probability given that these are my two conditions the first condition is the relationship r gen is equal to r so the relationship in the context should be equal to the relationship in the generated image that's one condition and the second condition is i have both of my objects in the image 
okay so p of b by a so if i want to find out p uh, probability that my relationships are equal then first i need to check whether i have both of the objects in the image or not correct conditional visor tells you what is the probability that the relationship is equal given that i have both of my objects in the image this is the first condition that i want to check and this is the second condition that i want to check given that the first condition is true okay so event 1 event 2 so i want to check the probability of event 2 given that the event 1 has already occurred given that i have both of the objects in the image if i don't have two objects in my image i can't even compare the relationships right the spatial mapping relationships so that's basically conditional visor it's very basic conditional probability and this is the formula that they have written down it's exactly the same thing again so if you know the conditional probability formula that's this p of b by p of a sorry p of uh oh yeah it is correct Okay, uh, so this is basically what visor is, basic conditional probability. So this is one kind of metric. Similarly, we have lots of different kinds of metric to calculate the spatial mapping. And <coughs> excuse me. Where are they? Where are they? Ah, oh, there you go. So these are all the different. Uh, evaluation metric that we can use instead of visor and uh, for this research paper they have took all these metrics along with visor and calculated the scores which is given in this table so these are all the different t2i models and for each one of those models these are all the different scores that you can get so based on these scores um again this is the third part of the research that they have mentioned here so if i go all the way back as they as they said they have given us three different things one is the visor model which is what we have seen so far and the second one is the sr2d dataset i've explained you how they have constructed the sr2d dataset basically they just took they have constructed labels mapped them with images and gave that as a dataset and the third one is evaluation of the existing models using existing metrics and visor okay we have existing models they have compared all of these models with the help of existing metrics and visor visor which is this part so they took all the existing models they compared them with the help of existing metrics and visor so you can go through these metrics and these are the actual statistics data that they have used to come to a conclude and say that only 40% sorry uh, less than 40% of the test cases have given us actual results so and this is where they have uh, given us the results telling that you know uh, less than 40% or in this case they have mentioned that lower than 30% have actually given us proper results and also um, if you remember i've told you that instead of using an object detector uh, they have conducted a study with actual humans to identify the objects and the relationships r gen to calculate r gen they have used humans which is this part the section 4.3 you can go through this entire section 
where they have done the exact same thing but instead of using a object detection model they've used a human multiple humans basically and the analysis part is again calculating the same thing So you can go through this section entirely and it's basically just a comparison of different models again and giving us the exact statistics of which model is performing better than which model, how they're all uh, comparing with each other. And in most of these cases, DALI version 2 has outperformed every other model. So it did outperform them, but that doesn't mean it gave us actual act accurate results it still doesn't give us accurate result only less than 30 percent of the test cases have passed compared to the remaining models DALI has given us a bit more results that's it so you can imagine how worse the remaining models are uh, so that basically tells us one major thing one big thing that is there is room for improvement in DALI as well not just DALI every other T2I model and all of this part is basically comparison and evaluation of the T2I models and also the visor score. So this is where they have compared the visor, conditional visor with remaining existing uh, metrics which are similar to visor. They have compared them and if you can see here, visor, where is the visor? So you can go through this entire part, uh, it doesn't tell us much about uh, the visor, it doesn't tell us much about the uh, method that we can use to improvise visor or to eliminate a time complexity or remove. So you can go through this whole section by yourself but uh, it's not that important it basically compares different evaluation metrics and uh, gives you statistical results saying that you know this metric is better than that metric but this model is better than that model but at the end of the day uh, most of the time DALI is going to perform better and yet it is giving us less than 30 percentage of accurate results and basically the whole summary of this section And they've also used something called as P-COCO score uh, to compare how visor is performing. So they have introduced conditional probability, conditional visor, and they have compared conditional visor with P-COCO to say which one is uh, you know, much more reliable. And in the seventh part, I believe, yeah, or no, it's in sixth part. So other failure models. This section is extremely interesting where they are discussing about different other bugs that they have found in T2I models. So spatial mapping is just one small defect that they have identified in this whole research. And similarly, they have identified some other uh, faults, other backlogs as well in different T2I models, not just DALI, but uh, a lot of different T2I models and they have mentioned about them and referenced all of them in this section. You can go through them. I'm going to uh, read those papers and create new videos on them. But for now, uh, I guess we have discussions and conclusions. So 
nothing much in conclusions part is just about uh, summarizing whatever they have uh, discussed so far in this paper this entire sixth section is very much interesting you can go through them it's going to reference to a lot of research that is currently being done on t2i models again gans themselves are very much brand new uh, not completely brand new but uh, image gans conditional gans are very much brand new and this entire section tells us about all the different research that is being done on all these conditional gans you can go through this section it's very interesting but it doesn't have much to do with this paper so i'm going to skip explaining this part and there you go folks we have our references uh, that's pretty long list of references you can go through them and these are all the different images that they've generated and gave us for reference to help us understand the spatial relationships so let's take any one example here an oven to the left of the sorry an oven to the left of an orange so if you see all these images a glide glide plus edn uh, they didn't perform that well but uh, dali version 2 gave us the most accurate results really good results and also these results uh, sometimes might be correct sometimes might be wrong so if you see this part or this part both of these images or even this one let's say we have a special mapping of uh, something that's not just left right above beyond but also diagonal and inside out so even these images we have a special mapping with the object inside my second object so again even for visor 2 we can calculate uh, which object is inside of which object and which object is diagonal to the other object we can calculate them using the exact same x a x b but where is that part yeah so using similar method we can calculate them but to do that we need to have third axis which is the z axis so let's say uh, let's wait for uh, the folks at Microsoft Research to improvise this research and come up with some different models, some different approach to calculate three-dimensional mapping. So far whatever we have seen so in this entire research is basically two-dimensional uh, relationship but uh, let's wait and see if we can get some different way, some different approach to identify the three-dimensional relationship as well. This is basically just references. Okay guys, so I'm gonna end this video at this point. I hope you have a clear understanding of what this entire research paper has been all about. So benchmarking spatial relationships in text to image generation. Uh, that's The title is a little confusing to be honest. They're not just benchmarking them, they've also given us one more exist one more metric called visor but i can see why they have not included that in the title because again visor is not that suggestible to be used but their benchmarks their statistics the way they have evaluated all the different models existing models with existing metrics that's very interesting and usable pretty usable right so we can go with that uh, so i believe that's the reason why they have given this as the title for this paper but yeah that's pretty much it for this video thank you for watching see you in the next video thank you